There's currently a ton of hype over Apple's brand new M2 MacBooks, and that's why we just ordered four of the MacBook Pros for our in-depth testing and comparison videos. But we're already seeing reports about Apple's higher-end M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros going into production very soon. And based on all of my research, I have a pretty good feeling that these 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros are gonna be a lot more powerful than everybody's expecting. So in this video, I'm gonna explain why I'm now fully convinced that Apple's M2 Pro and Max chips will actually be built on TSMC's brand new three nanometer process node technology, contrary to the mainstream belief that they'll be based on the M2 chips second gen five nanometer node. And yes, I know that sounds crazy because it's the complete opposite of what Apple did with their M1 chips, where the entire lineup was based on the same first generation five nanometer node. But trust me, by the end of this video, I think you'll be convinced as well. So let's get started. First off, I wanna provide some evidence from multiple sources that TSMC's three nanometer chip technology should be ready in time for the launch of Apple's M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros. Back in March, Mark Gurman reported that Apple will likely not launch the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models until 2023. And just a couple of weeks ago, he gave us an update saying that it could be the end of this year or early next year. Now, in my opinion, I think early 2023, specifically at a spring event, makes the most sense for the launch of these MacBook Pros. And that's because I fully believe Apple's fall events will be consumed by the release of the redesigned M2 Mac Mini, the M2 iPad Pros, and potentially even the new Mac Pro. So to me, it makes the most sense for the new MacBook Pros to get revealed in the spring of next year because I fully believe that Apple is switching to an 18 month or one and a half year timeline for major Mac updates. And I'm confident in this because Apple revealed their M2 chip around 18 months after the original M1 in November of 2020. And we already have many rumors from multiple sources that the M3 chip is gonna be revealed at the end of 2023, which will also be around 18 months after the launch of the M2, hence an 18 month timeline. And as we know, the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips were revealed in November of 2021, and 18 months after that lands perfectly in the spring of next year. But moving on to the actual chip side of things, back in April, Mark Gurman reported that there's already evidence of Apple internally testing the new M2 Pro and Max chips with up to 12 CPU cores and 38 GPU cores. And that actually confirms a report from 9to5Mac in March claiming that Apple's working on two Mac minis, one with an M2 chip for launch later this year, and another with an M2 Pro chip with a 12-core CPU, exactly what Mark Gurman reported. But the biggest bombshell leak came from Jeff Pu just a couple of weeks ago, claiming that TSMC will be starting mass production of new three nanometer M2 Pro chips later this year year. Yes, he actually said three nanometer chips in mass production this year, which would be perfect for a spring 2023 launch. And at first I had trouble believing him because the entire M1 family of chips was based on the same first gen five nanometer process node. So why in the world would Apple build half of the M2 family of chips on a three nanometer node and the regular M2s on five nanometer? Well, I came up with four pretty good reasons for Apple to do this. First of all, if the M2 Pro and Max chips are based on the same five nanometer node that the M2 chip is based on, then the performance might be quite disappointing because the IPC improvements are pretty minimal on the M2, with most of the gains coming from the extra GPU cores. And now for the second reason, TSMC's three nanometer technology is a major breakthrough as I'm gonna show you guys in just a minute, which means that it's also gonna be quite expensive. And the key point is that whenever a breakthrough chip node gets released, like a three nanometer die, the yields on those dies are pretty low since the technology to make them is brand new. 
So it actually makes the most sense to debut a new process node on a product that doesn't sell in massive volumes, making a three nanometer launch perfect for Apple's higher end and more expensive MacBook Pros, especially since that's the target market that actually cares about having the highest performance, which a new three nanometer process would give. So because of that, I came up with a very interesting theory. What if Apple intentionally wanted to split up their M2 family of chips between five nanometer and three nanometer based process nodes? And why would they do this? Well, because Apple knows that their lower end Macs like the M1 MacBook Air and base M1 MacBook Pro are the best selling laptops in the world. And if these chips were based on three nanometer tech, they literally would not have enough yield left over for their higher end M2 Pro and Max chips. So by building their brand new basic M2 chip on the already existing and mature five nanometer process and giving that to their highest end, highest volume products like the new M2 MacBook Air, the base MacBook Pro, likely the upcoming Mac mini and the future iPad Pro and iPad Air models, they would be ensuring that their higher end MacBook Pros have as many brand new three nanometer chips as they need to account for the low initial yields. And then later in 2023, they could finally bring three nanometer to the lower end max when the yields have finally improved. And from a design standpoint, Apple has always started their chip designs with their iPhone chips and scaled them up to their larger iPad chips. But now that the Apple Silicon Mac transition is about to complete, what if Apple switches to doing everything in reverse? What if they start their chip design with the M2 Max die built on the brand new three nanometer node, and then they simply combine two of those dies to create the M2 Ultra chip, or four of them to create the M2 Extreme destined for the Mac Pro, while at the same time cutting the M2 Max in half to create the M2 Pro chip, just like they did with the M1 Pro. And then on the flip side, they can take the M2 Max die and scale it down to create the future M3 chip, because I believe it's easier to scale down than it is to scale up. And then they can take those same cores from the M2 Max and scale them down further for the new A17 chip design going into the iPhone. So you basically have an entire array of chips based entirely on the single M2 Max die requiring the least amount of R&D possible and saving Apple cash. And if you're not convinced yet that the M2 Pro and Max dies will be built on three nanometer, here is the nail in the coffin. If Apple's chips are truly on a 1.5 year timeline and Apple chose to go with five nanometer again for the M2 Pro and Max chips, then these high end chips wouldn't be built on three nanometer until the fall of 2024, which is honestly way too long and I'm gonna prove it to you. TSMC just had their technology symposium event for 2022, where they revealed their updated roadmap for their chip nodes. And guess what? Their brand new three nanometer N3 node is in their 2022 timeline, with TSMC confirming that N3 is on track to start high volume manufacturing in the second half of this year, with actual chips set to get delivered to real customers in early 2023, perfectly fitting the 18 month timeline for when the M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros should get released. But wait, they added a disclaimer. This technology is mostly aimed at early adopters like Apple who can invest in leading edge designs and would benefit from the performance, power, and area advantages offered by leading edge nodes. So why in the world would Apple not adopt three nanometer for their M2 Pro and Max chips if three nanometer is actually gonna be ready right in time for launch? Do you really believe they would let their competitors adopt three nanometer first while they wait another 18 months until late 2024 for the M3 Pro and Max chips? Well, I don't, especially since there are rumors that Intel is delaying their Meteor Lake chips until the third or fourth quarter of 2023, the same chips that are supposed to partially utilize TSMC's new three nanometer process node. 
And that Intel delay means more three nanometer chip yields for Apple's M2 Pro and Max chips coming in early 2023. So hopefully all of that was enough to convince you that Apple's new chips will be based on TSMC's three nanometer node. But now let's finish off with why this is gonna be a massive deal for those new high-end MacBook Pros. But first, I wanna give a huge shout out to our brand new M2 cubed chip design that you can find in our merch shelf right below this video. And make sure to use the coupon code M2CHIP to save 20% on all of our merch. Speaking of N3, TSMC expects a 25 to 30% reduction in power usage with three nanometer compared to five nanometer, which is massive, allowing the chips to run a lot cooler and save battery life. And on the flip side, they expect 10 to 15% more performance, and that's not even counting Apple's own upgrades that they can make, like redesigning the actual cores, increasing caches, adding in faster RAM, and adding in more cores. But by far, the biggest benefit is the brand new N3 FinFlex hybrid technology that TSMC just announced, which for the first time ever, allows them to split their N3 nodes into three different options. One with three two fins for maximum performance, one with two two fins, for a good balance between performance, power efficiency, and density, and then a 2-1 fin for ultra power efficiency with the lowest power consumption and highest density. And the best part is that Apple will be able to combine those three varieties of N3 onto the same die for the first time ever, which could drastically improve performance and efficiency since the current N5 node is set to two fin across the entire die with no fine tuning allowed. So there you guys go. That's why I think the new M2 Pro and Max chips are gonna be based on TSMC's three nanometer process node, which is gonna make them absolutely insane. And if you disagree with me, go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed the video, click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and check out one of those two right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.